Hello and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blogcast. This is episode 205. And uh, I've run out of um, culturally significant, important for the moment blogs. I mean, I've written a couple of things that no one should ever see. Uh, but uh, so those are not g- going anywhere. Um, but other than that, it, uh, I'm going back into the back catalog here. I'm going to actually go in the order of things as they were written or more truthfully, how they in the order they, they were published in. Uh, so, yeah, so today's blog cast is is not uh, not of this moment, shall we say. If you need something that is not of this moment, this is 100% not of this moment. (laughs) Not only, like, I think this blog was written before the pandemic and then published, you know, now, so during the pandemic, uh, and I'm blogcasting it um, now in the middle of the police state uh, revolution. So uh, it's, it's not... It's never the moment for this particular one, but but it's I'm just, it is it is the moment in terms of it. It's like it's up. It's the next one up. It's the next one on the list. So so here it comes. Um, anyway, uh, it is called "You Have Theater, I Have the Bachelor." Note: This is another one of these that I wrote a few months ago and just couldn't figure out how to adapt. For this moment. I suppose all I could add is what I wrote in my previous blog about appreciating even the worst theater more now. I don't dislike theater so much at this moment because there is none. But I hope it will be back soon for me to dislike just as much as before. Anyway, here are some thoughts from before. I'm an artist who tends to hang out with other artists, so I sometimes have trouble making sense of or being made sense of by non-artists. Sometimes I discover how dramatically different our worldviews can be, such as when an acquaintance of mine said something like, you have theater, I have The Bachelor. It was sort of a joke, but I think to them it felt like a real equivalency. It helped me see that there are probably many who believe that my relationship to theater, to writing, to the arts, is like being a fan of something or having a hobby they really enjoy. This explains a lot. Because for me, and for a lot of artists like me, dedicating our lives to our artistic process or craft is nothing like a hobby and nothing like being a fan. We don't do it because it's fun or we like it. Most of us do it because we have to, because anything else is a pale imitation of the life we want. Most artists love and hate their art in equal measure in a complicated relationship of adoration and despair. Is your relationship to The Bachelor so complicated or do you just like to watch it on a Monday night? Did you sacrifice any hope of a normal life for your love of The Bachelor? Did you forego a decent job with a decent salary for a shot to audition for a show? Did you skip having a family because it would be so hard to balance with your love of the show? Did you throw yourself on the mercy of the world with hopes that it would take your offering of your sweat, your blood, your labor, your practice, your nerves, your time, your hopes, your dreams, and return them to you in some form? Did you do that for The Bachelor? No? Then what we have is a little bit different. I'm not a fan of theater. I don't like it. One of the greatest American poets, Marion Moore, wrote a poem called Poetry that begins, I too dislike it. To someone who hasn't dedicated their life to an art, it might seem weird to dislike the thing you've dedicated your life to. But to me, it's the most logical and poignant experience of being an artist. I too dislike theater. I love it more than anything, and it breaks my heart 
over and over and over. I dislike it a lot most of the time. I've sacrificed any semblance of a normal life for it, and that choice feels as though it was made for me so long ago, I never really had a choice about it. I too dislike it. There are things that are more important beyond all this fiddle. Maybe you do feel like that about The Bachelor. I don't know your life, and I mean no disrespect to Bachelor fans who feel deeply about their show of choice. But being a fan of something tends to be different than a lifelong commitment to an artistic practice that will break your heart. Enjoying knitting is one thing. Dedicating yourself to knitting a scale model of New York City in surrealist colors is another. One is a hobby. The other is an art. I think it may be important to understand the distinction, especially as it relates to support for the arts. People who believe the arts are fun hobbies are not inclined to support them. They think, no one supports their model train hobby. Why should they support the theater or ballet or musicians or whatever? And the answer is because they are not the same. They are not the same. They are not the same. So this one got a few comments on the actual blog, which was fun. That doesn't happen very often. Um, And one of them I just want to read to you because I feel like it raises a really important point that I just forgot about while I was writing about it. So uh, let me just read you what Dan said. Uh, He said, then, too, the energies they commit to The Bachelor do not have as an end goal sharing something with their community. Personal enjoyment is not public service. And while I often fear that what I do is essentially silly, in the end, it's intended to take care of colleagues as they share something with others. Your friend enjoys The Bachelor and is indebted to those who make The Bachelor. So there's also some muddying of the waters in our ecosystem where some arts, or let's say some stories, are subsidized so that those who consume them needn't think of helping pay for them. Their chosen stories simply float effortlessly out of the ether. Behind some curtain somewhere, the great and powerful Oz is working her butt off. So that's what Dan said, and I felt like it was a really important uh, uh, aspect of what I was talking about. Also, I should say that the person who uh, I was talking to did not actually say The Bachelor. It was another show. Uh, But I changed it to The Bachelor because I did not want to out this particular person. Um, You know, we're not we're not close friends we were acquaintances really and I I don't I don't it's not about her or about um the particular show it's more what it reveals to me about um some thinking that goes on around the arts um so yeah so I changed the show I'll tell you what it is if you want to know but it doesn't really matter um Yeah, so uh, because I chose The Bachelor, I decided for a song, I was like, well, what am I going to do for this one? There's, you know, only so many theater songs that I can do. I feel like I've done them all already, or at least all of mine. Um, So I was like, is there something about like a Bachelor? And then I remembered Amy Mann has this whole album called Bachelor Number 2, which I somehow just never paid that much attention to when it first came out. And even though so many people that I uh, admire, like, loved it, I just never got into it. Um, so I was like, maybe there's a song on Bachelor number two that has is a song about The Bachelor. Um, and there isn't. There's not one. There's so... <laughs> but in, in looking at it and listening to it and discovering it, uh, I stumbled upon... Um, a song called Red Vines, which is the song that I'm going to play for you. Um, and the reason I went for it is because, A, it's on the album, Bachelor Number 2. And uh, it, it, the tagline or the, the final line of the song that repeats is watching the show. And that is what this person is doing. She's watching the show. So 
and and I'm talking about making shows, and there you go. <laughs> anyway, that is my thinking for this song, and I enjoyed learning it a lot and uh, getting to spend some time with it. It is about something completely different than I thought. The whole time I was working on it, I was like, this song is about uh, a father with a personality disorder and this child is like unable to, uh, anyway, it was a whole story I made up about what's going on in the song. And then I just was like, I'm not sure about this. So I, I uh, looked it up on Genius, Genius, formerly known as Rap Genius, now just called Genius, uh, where you can check out lyrics of things. And uh, it's about something entirely different. <laughs> <laughs> it's apparently a song that Amy Mann wrote for Paul Thomas Anderson, the filmmaker, when he first kind of experienced uh, fame. Um, so it's a little bit about the the fame bubble about to burst, which is about a, it's totally different. But you could listen to it my way if you like. Um, it, it's not my way anymore because I sort of uh, my brain went, ah, oh, yes, I see what it's really about, and and I sang it that way. But anyway, that's music is funny that way, isn't it? Lyrics can be read so many ways. So, before I play it for you, uh, if you like the podcast, please like, review, subscribe, write reviews if you feel like it in the various apps. That's fun. Um, there's some fun reviews of The Dragoning, which is my audio drama podcast um, in, in Apple, which I find very delightful. Um, so check those out if you feel like it. Um, the other way to support the podcast is by telling someone about it. And if you'd like to support it with some money, we have patreon.com slash Emily R. Davis. There's also Kofi and PayPal. And uh, thank you for listening. Um, you can do any of those things or, or just listen like you're doing. So thank you for listening. Um, it's a weird time, and uh, I'm glad to be with you. So, um, here is Red Vines by Amy Mann. They're all still on their honeymoon Just read dialogue balloon everyone loves you why should they not and I'm the only one who knows that Disneyland's about to close I don't suppose you'd give it a shot knowing all that you've got are cigarettes and red vines Close your eyes, cause baby, you never do know And I'll be on the sidelines with my hands tied Watching the show Well, it's always fun and games until It's clear you haven't got the skill In keeping the gag from going too far so you're running around the parking lot Till every lightning bug is caught Punching some pinholes in the lid of our jar While we wait in the car With cigarettes and red vines Just close your eyes cause baby you never do know And I'll be on the
watching the show watching the show watching the show watching